Hello there. My name is Tosan Jemide. I like to call myself a baker, but people call me the African cake maestro. I am of the famed Cakes by Tosan, which has grown into kind of a household name over time. <laughs> I started in the year 2000 when I came into Nigeria from the UK and I set up shop from nothing. Actually, when I came into Nigeria, you know, <laughs> I came with a suitcase and 200 pounds in my pocket, you know, and I built um, quite a reputable cake um, company doing amazing craft and really, really great cake work. We grew and I got into a place where I felt, you know, it was too big for me. There was really nothing else I wanted to do again. I had, I had done it all basically. I had like won several hearts, you know, from, you know, the award winning to the well-recognized cake maestro. And I was thinking, you know, what else? And I also started to get tired of the grind, you know, no sleep continuous heating the oven, bringing out cakes, baking, covering, decorating, going to sleep, power, power naps and waking up. And even if I don't have work to do, I'm like, ah, <laughs> you know, so it started to really get to me mentally as well. You know, like maybe I'm going crazy here. You know? So I, I thought, you know, um, start to think about how to wind down. You know, this was many years ago where you know i knew that when i get get up to 50 you know i really won't want to be doing that sort of grind again you know so i started to think about what else to do and we got to the point where i opened up a, a commercial wholesale bakery concern called top crust um, that started in 2011 and it it went very well it was a runway success you know so that now put me in a comfortable position where I felt, you know, um, my retirement from active cake baking, you know, was kind of, in quote, guaranteed, you know, and I could really step aside when I wanted to, you know. So when I turned 50, I felt, you know, it was time for me to begin to pull back a bit and rather than, you know, do the grind of baking continuously, do it when I want to do, when I have the odd commission that I feel, you know, I want to do this one and if I don't want to do it, then I'm not going to do it, you know. So, um, and then I also wanted it to be a time where I call the legacy phase of my life, where I'm focused on giving back and, you know, mentoring and bringing and raising people up. So that has been a journey, you know, so far. And one of the highlights of this journey is when you know, um, I built the tallest cake in Africa, which was, which was um, a 28-foot edifice. It was at the, it displayed at the Galleria in Victoria Island, and you know that was a lot of hard work, but it was real glory, um, and it put it put the Nigerian cake industry on the global map because it it did draw a lot of attention, and. Um, in so many ways to, you know, my entrance into, you know, the cake industry, I, I came with a lot of glam and wow factor. My cakes used to be tall, character, attitude, a lot of drama, you know, so people started seeing cakes differently. And, you know, I, I also had the impudence, in quote, you know, to charge some crazy amounts of money, you know, this is the value of my cake. And, so that started to really create more value down the line. From where I stand, you know, it's been an awesome journey so far, you know, but I tell you something, it's been crazy. It's been dreary sometimes. Um, I've wanted to give up so many times, you know, and I just get fed up. But, you know, a lot has happened, you know, in this journey. And 
I, I would say that I have come thus far and I would like to share that story of how difficult it's been, you know, with you. I actually stumbled into cakes. Cakes was never my dream career. <laughs> I didn't grow up thinking, you know, when, when, when you're a child, you say, oh, I want to be a doctor, I want to be an engineer. Yeah, I was an NFA, I didn't want to be anything. <laughs> you know, people used to say, I want to be a doctor. I'm like, yeah, I can't be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I said, no, I don't like to argue. I don't want to be a lawyer. <laughs> so what do you want to be? Nothing. <laughs> so I had really nothing that I wanted to be. But one thing that I had going for me was that I had a very creative flair. That was established from time, you know, and, you know, I was really good in the kitchen. Um, my mom used to do a lot of cakes. My mom was an excellent chef. She was a baker. She was a homemaker altogether, you know. Um, so she used to do a lot of work at home, you know, baking cakes for weddings and birthdays, you know, and I was like her go-to guy where, you know, of all the kids, I was the only one who would actually succumb to doing the chores when it comes to preparing the things down and just prepping her for, for the work she wanted to do. Everybody else would basically run away. So she had a way around, you know, just sweet talking me into helping her cream the sugar and butter, which at that time there were no mixers, so it was all hand. Um, she had a way of just getting me to do all the work. She, she had a day job, so she would go to work and basically come back hoping that Tosan had gotten everything ready, which I always used to do, you know, and I never really baked a cake on my own, but, you know, I used to help her a lot. Well, unfortunately, my mom passed when I was 13, going on 14, and it was very sad, painful, but somehow or the other, that now opened the door for me in the cake making career. So three years after my mom passed, my eldest brother was getting married. And my brother was really gutted because he was like, I'm not going to pay for a wedding cake. You know, my mom had given so many free cakes out and how can we now pay for a cake from this family? It's not head of. <laughs> so my brother was like, well, we have to look for who's going to bake the cake from within. And if anybody who's going to bake it, it's going to be you too. So I'm like, I've never baked a cake in my life. But, you know, he says, well, if anybody can bake it, it will be you. You have the best chance to bake a cake. You knew what mom used to do. You never did it, but you knew what she used to do. After a lot of battle and struggle and rebellion, I actually succumbed. And it was a very, very uphill task for me. I was scared, you know, beyond my imagination. I thought, okay, I'll try it. So I went, went into the archives, dug up all my mom's old baking stuff, her books, um, baking pans, all, everything, basically. I just dug everything out. In those days, we really had no resources. You know, there was no online, there was no internet, there was nothing that you could refer to. It was just my old, the, the old books that my mom had, and I, you know, I read through them. I set up a lab, I started to try different things, recipes, baked a few times, had some really bad disasters, you know, started again, you know, and eventually I got something that, you know, was a semblance of a decent enough cake. So I ticked that off, went on to decorating and, you know, tried, it was royal icing at that time, gosh, royal icing was so difficult to work with. You know, you had to get the right consistency of the real icing, you know, there were no molds. There was just, there was no shortcuts when it came to decorating a cake then. You just had to know how to do it. You know, so after so much effort, you know, I got something that I felt, okay, I can pull this through, you know, and 
prepared for the wedding. Wedding came, I did the cake, you know, um, and everybody thought, oh, wow, 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 amazing. But, you know, it was a terribly ugly cake. <laughs> you know, when I think about how the cake, my memory of the cake now, and, you know, what I eventually transcended into, the kind of work that I do now, you know, I mean, you can't compare, you know, but they say, hey, do not despise the days of um, little beginnings, you know, and um, so I'm, I'm very proud of my first cake ever, which was a wedding cake, and it was made for my brother, and really that's how I started. This cake was baked just a few months before I started uni. Went into uni. Um, by the time I got into university, I also found out that I had become a serial entrepreneur because um, dad used to give me some kind of pocket money that I would just question and say, you know, what am I going to use this money for? <laughs> by the time I go one week, two weeks, three weeks, you know, before the month ends, I'm done. So I started looking inward you know, what can I do, what can I do? So I had my hustle where I used to do a lot of catering. Most of the parties I used to cater for in UI when I was there. Um, and then I also had a clothing concern that I used to run while I was in school. You know, I had different tailors. I'd go to the market, get fabrics, all my clothes I used to make them and when people would see, oh, well, where do you get nice? Okay, make one for me, make one for me. You know, and I, I basically turned into a tailor while I was at school. So that used to give me some extra cash, you know, doing the tailoring and then um, the catering. But cakes I used to do, people used to ask for cakes, but nothing really serious. But by the time I finished school, I went straight into clothing. I didn't work for anyone. I did my youth, youth service in a clothing outfit somewhere in Ikeja. And by the time I'd finished youth call, I started my own business. I bought, you know, two small machines. I was walking out of a room in my cousin's house, you know, and, you know, it, it started to grow in leaps and bounds. We got a shop, we got a factory, you know, so, I mean, I'd established a business in clothing. And clothing line was very, very casual. Um, it was fun too, you know. So I was enjoying that immensely. But you know, something kept niggling at me. I, I always still used to get the odd cake order. Um, the very close family friend or the cousin or, you know, someone whose head that I made for a cousin would come and say, you know, I wanted a wedding cake or I wanted a birthday cake and, you know, I would do it, but you know, I felt very inadequate in so many ways because I had no formal or technical training. So that, that used to niggle at me, you know, in a way that I, I didn't have the confidence to really blow out, but it was there. And the more the, the orders came, the more that pressure was on me, you know, what can I do with this, you know, is this where, you know, I'm being led to kind of question in my mind, you know, so I got to a point where, you know, I thought, okay, just give it a shot. At that time, there was no formal training being done in this country at all. There were just one or two people that I knew who were doing cakes in some sort of commercial, um, in a commercial level. But they didn't want to train as much as I talked to them. So I wanted to learn, they were not interested in training. So the only option I had was actually to go somewhere to learn went to the UK. By the time I got there, you know, um, I saw that there was so much I wanted to learn and it wasn't going to be just a stint like I thought. You know, initially I thought, okay, go for one month, 
just will learn, come back. But when I got there, you know, I just, I knew I had to stay and learn in the system. And my, my preferred mode of learning based on the things that I had seen was actually work, you know, in the industry, get into the space, see how things are done commercially. And that kind of took me, you know, about four years, you know, working all sorts of odd jobs. Sometimes it used to be very painful. I worked in a bakery where I would wake up at 3 a.m., you know, start the, the morning shift, get the bread going, sort out the cakes. Then I moved to Coughlands. I worked in Greg's. I, I eventually got this very nice Porsche place in Knightsbridge where, you know, I really enjoyed the work and it was like real craft. So that was, I think that was the highlight of my work in. Um, it was called Gloriettes. And at Gloriettes, we used to make like the cakes for all the like high street shops. So that was what, you know, the highlight of my working in the UK was. And that gave me some real, real good experience that I would never have gotten, you know, from any school. In that time, I was also doing a lot of cakes at home. You know, people were commissioning me for wedding cakes. I was still doing catering then, you know, so back in, back in England, you know, I would cater for a wedding, I would do the wedding cake and, you know, little or no help. It was really, really hard work. I started to think, you know, I can't do the two together. You know, I had my day job had my side hustle at home. So I slowly started to wind down on my day job. Um, took one day out of my regular routine. Then I started working part-time, um, part-time working four days a week, part-time working three days a week, part-time working two days a week, part-time working one day a week. Then I said, no, I'm not working one day a week. There's no point. So at that point, it was now crunch time to decide do I really, really want to start a full-fledged business in the UK? You know, and I'd always had my reservations of staying in the UK. I also felt that my, my potentials would be maximized if I came back to Nigeria. I felt that, you know, my impact would be felt a lot more if I came back to Nigeria. So, you know, I took the plunge and decided to, decided to come back to Nigeria. At that point, everybody thought I was crazy, you know, because it wasn't anything that I planned. It was very spontaneous, which is usually what I do in my crazy moments. I just go for it. I'm not discussing with anyone. I'm just doing what I, my intuition has told me to do. And, you know, I often came back to Nigeria. Came back to Nigeria. When I came to Nigeria, I came with two suitcases. And those suitcases, one was my personal belongings, the other one had, you know, some cake stuff that I'd, you know, just put together. And um, I didn't have any money, I had 200 pounds in my pocket, and, but I came all the same. I started staying with my sister somewhere in Ikeja. She had a very small pokey flat and she allowed me use a cubicle in that flat to start off my cake work. Um, that cubicle was probably, it was a cubicle. <laughs> it was a cubicle, you know, and I started work from there all by myself. Um, just started to churn out some really, really amazing cakes and in no time my orders were just pouring in i couldn't manage the orders so i had to get more hands um, and remember at that time you know the cake space was really really vacant you know people were doing cakes but people were not doing amazing cakes 
So when I came, I started to offer out of the ordinary and that just blew people's minds. Anybody who saw the cake would be like, wow, who did this? Where did you get this cake from? Ah, there's this guy in town, Tosa, 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 Tosa. And before I knew it, my name was buzzing all over the place. I came to Nigeria in, in January of 2000. By December of 2000, I had rented a, a duplex, you know, set up a shop there, bought a car. I was, all, I was basically all set up, you know, and um, thereafter, business actually just blew, you know. As hard as work was, you know, I didn't really have time to do anything else because there were times where I would churn out seven cakes in one weekend and the next weekend I would have eight wedding cakes and the weekend after that I'll have six wedding cakes and the weekend after that I can have five wedding cakes and then ten wedding cakes and it was crazy. It was like, it was madness, you know. My team, I had an excellent team that I built from scratch. It was an amazing team, you know, um, and we always used to work non-stop, day and night, night and day. But you do, the, the, the advantage I had was because I was working from home, I basically created my, my back house into my factory. So it was a bit easy in the sense that I didn't have to do the commuting. So there were times, you know, in two weeks, I wouldn't even see the road outside. In one month, I would just basically go and buy suya across the road and come back. I'm not going anywhere because I don't need to go anywhere. Work was from home, work was intense, work was like just nonstop, you know, and it was on and on and on and on and, you know, those were times that I really, really cherished because um, in the hard work, I could see, you know, I could see the fruits, I could see the benefits of hard work coming with nothing to Nigeria and actually seeing my business grow, you know, from leaps to bounds in little or no time just because I just focused and focused and focused. I really didn't care what anybody was doing. I wasn't looking at who was doing cakes or not doing cakes and what kind of cakes they were doing. I, ju I just was passionate about what I was doing. I just working my, my way through everything that I did. You know, so that was one of, you know, the highlights of my career. Mm -hmm. 